I love weed and I smoke weed all the time and therefore I need things in my home that are conducive to that lifestyle and they didn't exist. And I wanted them to be like anything, reflective of my tastes and my sensibilities. And on a kind of a cultural level, it would show that things made for people who smoke weed, by people who smoke weed, are as beautiful, well-made, well-considered, well-packaged, well-marketed. All that is done as well as any other product, the best products. And, and that's really like the standard that we hold ourselves to because I think weed is the best product and I think the things that surround weed should be the best products. We knew that this was a massive opportunity a once in a lifetime opportunity and one where we had incredible leverage from the authority that Seth and Evan had worked to establish in this category through film and media and Seth through a public figure in his unabashed consumption of cannabis as part of his daily life. This is an incredibly productive and contributing member of society who is also high every day. And that authority in the category offered us a way in that was incredibly unique. And so we knew that we had this different approach to the space and we really made a concerted effort to not squander that opportunity. And so we've been incredibly patient and disciplined in building out our strategy with a long-term view on this opportunity. Seth and Evan grew up together in Vancouver. Evan's my cousin. Seth and I have been friends for decades, known each other probably 25 years now. We were living here in Los Angeles as cannabis was going through different phases of legalization and we started having loads of conversations about this coming opportunity and how we could participate in it. Just kind of took the reins on that opportunity with the guys and we understood from the start of that exploration that the industry was really in its infancy and that this was gonna take a long time to play out. The result of years of meeting with all sorts of people across different parts of the industry and countless conversations, we landed on a path that included premium homewares and cannabis, house and plant. And the magic there is we understood that this industry was gonna to continue to evolve with a patchwork of legality, state by state, and that you need such infrastructure and, and reach uh, to be able to even exist in markets where it's currently legal. And that wasn't a game that we felt we should try to win at. Where we could win early days is coming up with a strategy where we could start to engage day one with an audience nationwide. And that was through our house goods, our premium homewares. And so when we launched the company ultimately here in the US, we launched with two sides of the business. One where as a cannabis company, we are also able to engage with consumers across the nation immediately. I grew up in an environment where uh, weed was not heavily stigmatized. Uh, everyone smoked weed, the jocks smoked weed, the nerds smoked weed, and everyone in between smoked weed. And so I moved to Los Angeles when I was around 17 and there was a real cultural difference um, in LA uh, and Vancouver, you know? And as much as LA and America I thought was kind of, uh, had a cultural acceptance towards weed, um, I realized they really didn't. And I realized that as someone who loved weed and put a lot of thought into weed and was also, you know, someone with a job and who was gainfully employed, people were really fascinated when I would do interviews and I would talk about weed. So we made this movie Pineapple Express, which was kind of like all our love letter uh, to weed. And we found when it came out that it really hit a chord with people who smoke weed as well, um, in, a, in a truly profound way sometimes. Mostly it became clear we could speak to a group of people that we are a part of in a way that 
maybe nobody else could. We, from the start, recognized that we were stepping into a space that has a really ugly history in this country. And we have made it paramount for us as a company to do work to try and rectify a lot of the harm that's been caused by the war on drugs and specifically communities of color here in, in the U.S. We work on speaking with regulators and, and speaking with government officials to try to push for change to be done and for change to be done properly. Assuming that culture keeps moving in the direction that everyone hopes it will move and that it seems to be moving in regards to weed, um, it feels like uh, the sky's the limit.